Good morning and welcome to Tiempo. I'm Ana Carbonell. And I'm Miguel Perez. And on today's show, we'll be talking to Frances Vasquez, who is the principal of Morris High School in the South Bronx. She was recently cited by President Reagan for turning that school around from one of the worst in the city to one of the very best. And then we'll talk about a group of parents that have banded together to help one another. And we'll also learn about a new ABC network offering that's going to bring programs in Spanish to your living rooms. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is the connection you've been waiting for. Turn on WPLJ for the best rock, the best jocks, the best music mix with more of your favorites. WPLJ has it all. More of what you want from your radio station. WPLJ, the home of rock and roll. This week on The Morning Show, Jamie Lee Curtis talks about what it's like to share the spotlight with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy in her new movie, Trading Places. And soap star Anthony Geary comes east to tell us how the role of Luke Spencer on General Hospital has earned him yet another Emmy nomination. And speaking of daytime television, we'll be there at the Daytime Emmy Awards to talk about all the winners from your favorite soaps. And since it's June, we'll be showing you all the latest trends in a celebration that's making a comeback, weddings. Plus, Julie Budd and Dabney Coleman at 9. Good evening, here's the news. Good evening, here's the news. Today, television seems to be producing newscasters who all look and sound the same. But one news team has never lost its personal touch. Gee, you look kind of nice tonight. I do? Yeah, who dressed you? Funny. Because on Eyewitness News, we're as different as the city we report to. And Raj, please don't forget to smile tonight. I am smiling. Life's precious. It, it's, it's life that is the, is the thing that Judaism values the most. If you're a cop, then, then you've got all these brothers, and you take care of each other and watch out for each other. And that's, that's the way the Jewish community should be. Life is too precious to just sit around on your butt and wait for somebody else to save it or enhance it for you. You have to go out, and everybody owes it to give their share and to, to do their part. You get back a lot more than you give. And just by changes from the principal's office down in leadership, these schools have become what schools are supposed to be to the extent that students are leaving private schools to transfer to these public schools. One of the schools President Reagan was talking about was Morris High School in the South Bronx. And with us today is the principal of that high school, Frances Vasquez. Welcome to Tiempo. Thank um, you very much. Were you surprised to find out that the president had mentioned you in one of his nationally televised speeches? Absolutely, totally surprised. In fact, it was a reporter that called me that night and informed me. And what was your reaction when you first well, heard about this? I was thrilled because finally something about the South Bronx was being spoken of in positive terms. During the same speech, however, the president went on to say that uh, the federal government should not be involved in uh, education or, or not as involved. He would, he would like it to be less involved in education nationally. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, only in part. I think what he wants to do is, is remove some of the regulation and some of the funding. But uh, as far as improving schools, there are definitely things that you can do without money, merely by changing your policies and things that you do within the building. The reason why he cited your school is because he said that you were doing incredible things and you were doing it without money. Um, how much can be done without money and how much do, does, do you really need money for? How much can you do? Well, in order to hire people, you need money, that's for sure. But uh, if you have a staff that's very willing to, to give of themselves, then you certainly can make changes. For example, uh, in, in security. Uh, if people are willing to help out, you can improve your discipline and security. In what's done in the classroom, if, if your staff is willing to work a little bit harder, prepare their lessons with more care, uh, integrate basic skills in their classes, you can do that without money. And other policies, uh, for example, um, giving homework. This is one of the recommendations made by the National Commission. 
That's a policy that we instituted several years back. Every teacher in my school will give homework uh, at least a half an hour's worth every night so that a child does have several hours of homework a night. That doesn't take funds. Mm -hmm. I understand that there's also a model that says you can do or... Well, well that's something that I found myself saying quite a bit to students and to staff at times. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Try it. And um, the children believe it. The children need to be encouraged. And, you know, if you go to any school that's working, you're going to find that there's a high level of expectancy, that we expect them to perform, and they do as a result. You are the youngest principal in the city of New York. Well, uh, I don't know that for a fact. I know that uh, when I was uh, selected four years ago in the high schools, I certainly think that I was. Do you think that has anything to do with the fact that you've made such changes, the fact that there is uh, youth uh, uh, involved in, uh, uh, in fresh ideas coming into the school system? Well, uh, not really. I, you do need energy. That's a fact. It's, it's a very demanding job. It's uh, long hours and there is stress. So I guess youth will help. What did you set out to resolve first when you encountered? I understand that the school, when you first got there, was totally different than what it is now. Uh, there were kids hanging out in the hallways, not attending classes. Uh, it's a totally different operation now. Yes. Um, the first thing that I set out to do was just to provide an environment that is a healthy one. It's a purposeful and orderly environment where people can do what they're expected to do. And that was number one, improving the discipline and the security. And uh, we did that by just simply laying out some rules and regulations and then by educating everybody involved. We, we prepared manuals, we prepared contracts, and we didn't just hand it to students. We used it in the English classes, in the freshman English classes, where it was, it was read, it was discussed, it was written about, so that we could be sure that the youngsters knew. And then the next uh, very important thing was to improve the, the ratio of teachers to students, or adults to students, I should say. Mm -hmm. I think the more adult presence that you have, the more successful you will be. When you think about the fact that increasingly our students, particularly those in the urban schools, like in New York City, uh, come from one parent family homes. They really need the extra guidance mm -hmm. because it's not as it was a generation ago where a child would come home at three o'clock and mom was there and the milk and the cookies. It's, it's a lot harder now and they need the adult role models. Mm -hmm. What uh, you're, you, you have taken the school a long way now. Uh, the, um, from what I've read, 86% of your seniors this year will be going on to college. Uh, 1.3 million, uh, they are getting 1.3 million dollars in scholarships and financial aid. Uh, how do you do all this? How do, what, what motivates well, the students? Well, I think I, I mentioned, and I have to keep on saying it, I have a very dedicated staff. I have some people that are really super and that care about those youngsters. And how do you go about selecting such a staff? Um, well, uh, there's a lot of luck involved because in our system, we don't have that much say in who is hired. And in fact, when you uh, work in the South Bronx, very often you will get people that will not come. So as a result, it could very well be that the people who do come and stay are people who are just a little bit more dedicated and they work a lot harder. Well, the president cited in his speech the fact that uh, your school was emphasizing the, uh, the uh, return to basics in education. And, uh, can it all be done without money, though? He was emphasizing also in the same speech that, you know, you can do it without money. And I understand, for example, that your building needs about $8 million worth of repairs right now. What's Absolutely. wrong with the building? Well, the building uh, was opened in 1902, and uh, it is badly in need of modernization. We need a new roof, we need new heating, insulation, pipes, everything. And uh, I wish we could get it because I think it would help to... to morale tremendously. We've done a lot and we've done it despite that. The that building would, is a landmark building. Absolutely. It's an official landmark, the outside of the building, which looks like a Gothic cathedral, mm -hmm. as well as the inside auditorium. And uh, at one point it was uh, a jewel, beautiful, and it, it could be restored to that. Let me get back to the students now. How do you get them to realize their potential? How do you get them involved? How do you get them to see that there is a way out of the South Bronx? Well, uh, I hope that I serve as a role model to them. I'm a sure born do. and bred in the Bronx. I'm a Hispanic, as you will know. And um, also with the attitude 
of yes you can and getting this across first to your staff because if you have a staff if you have teachers that are going to say these kids can't learn then as a result they won't teach it and naturally the children won't right, learn right. but if you if you try and you keep on pushing and demanding performance you generally get some it's a question of attitude absolutely thank you for being with us and mm -hmm. good luck thank you let me turn to Anna okay thanks Miguel next parental support Hello, I'm Patty Duke Aston, and I'm here in Kakama, Kenya, where famine caused by an extended drought has already claimed the lives of thousands of the Turkana tribe. These children are victims of that famine. As you can see, their physical condition is appalling. They need food, they need medical care. Send your contribution now, we thank you. Another night in the town. Good friends, good company. And a good chance of getting yourself in trouble. We've got extra funding now to track down drinking drivers. Even after just a few beers, you could be impaired enough to be arrested under New York's tough laws. If you drink, it's your business. If you drink and drive, it's ours. For drinking drivers in New York State, the party's over. For Yankee baseball, it's WABC Talk Radio 77. Catch Yankee fever with me, Art Russ Jr. on Sports Talk right here on WABC Talk Radio 77. For every hit and pitch, nobody knows more about Yankee baseball than I do. Hey, Art, that's with one exception. Let's make that two exceptions. All right, all right, all right you guys. You got me, you got me. WABC Talk Radio 77, Yankee baseball. Nancy and I are among the 23 million families who own United States savings bonds. We buy bonds because they're good for America and good for us. Bonds are easy to buy at banks and through the payroll savings plan. And today's bonds are the best ever offered. For only $25, you can buy a bond that earns market-based interest, and it's just as safe and secure as always. I urge you to make bonds a part of your regular savings plan and help our nation and yourself to a better future. Now to tell us about parents that are helping one another under Parents United, Padres Unidos, is Dick Lash, Director of Direction Service, which is under the Community Service System, our society, <laughs> and uh, Mercedes de Cosme, one of the parents who's participating in that program. And thank you both for being with us today and uh, for coming. Um, first of all, I know that community services program, by the way, has been in existence for over 100 years, I think 130 right. years. And Direction is a project under that? Direction is a, was initiated as a time-limited demonstration to work with handicapped children and their families. The children needed special education, uh, related medical services, mental health services. So it became a project of the Community Service Society, which is an agency, a nonprofit voluntary agency. Uh -huh. Who is eligible to be part of that program? The program is, is intended for handicapped children and their families. We decided that we would uh, work with minority families, and therefore we located up in the Manhattan Valley area on the Upper West Side in a predominantly Hispanic area. Okay, let's go back to handicapped. How are you defining handicapped? The initial funding for direction service came from the U.S. Department of Education, so of course we would follow the educational guidelines, which are not that much dissimilar from um, medical guidelines. It would be a child with a physical handicap such as cerebral palsy or an orthopedic defect, a deficit of the sensorium such as hearing or vision, an emotionally disturbed child, or a child with some health impairment that would require a modification of his educational experience. Uh, what about uh, emotional problems? Do you take into consideration kids with emotional problems as oh, well? Oh, yes. Yes, certainly. Now, Mercedes, you have children. Yes, I have a daughter. Who a is, daughter who is part of the program. She is profoundly retarded, yes. Oh, she is retarded? She is profoundly retarded, yes. Okay. And what um, help are you getting through the Direction Program? Well, in 1978, my daughter was suspended from the school where she uh, attended, and I was 
completely without any help. So I was referred to the direction service and they helped me to get a new place for my daughter. Yeah. Since that day, I one of the clients of the direction service. And now we're having a problem because in 1980, uh, we were called for a meeting telling us that the direction service is not going to be existed any longer until July and um, August 81. So we have to do something in order to keep uh, our program alive. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided to form Los Padres Unidos. Now, Padres Unidos, Dick, exactly what is that? Padres Unidos is, is an entity, an organization, and its membership consists of the parents and, in fact, the families of the handicapped children who receive assistance from the direction service. I think it's expanded a little bit more than that in that a number of community people have become interested and have offered to, to work with us or, or serve on the board or on committees. This is all volunteer services? Completely volunteer. All right, what is Padres Unidos? How did it get its name, Padres Unidos? That's an well, Mercedes uh, made mention of the fact that we had to have a meeting and inform the parents that the program was going to receive a paralytic cut from the federal government. And then, in fact, it would be prematurely terminated on the second year of, of, our con of a three-year contract. The parents decided that they just wouldn't let this happen and that they would band together and do whatever they could. The first thing that they thought was they should have a name, and someone suggested Los Padres Unidos, and it was immediately accepted. Uh, how did the women accept that Padres means men? <laughs> well, we always complain about it because we are more women than Padres y Padres. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> They, uh, it would be interpreted to mean parents. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, it's located exactly where you had mentioned uh, okay. an area, but yes, where exactly? It's located, like? it's hosted by a public school, PS 145, and that's on 100, West 105th Street between Columbus and Amsterdam, mm -hmm. in the heart of Manhattan Valley area. Okay, now does Directions help fund that? Exactly, how does that work? Initially, the Community Service Society created the Direction Service with the federal funds that came from what was then the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare and subsequently became the U.S. Department of Education. After the uh, drastic cuts, the State Education Department uh, gave us some support and the New York City Youth Board gave us support. And we can look forward to uh, support again in the 1983-84 year from the New York City Youth Board and from the Community Service Society. Okay, now both you and Mercedes have mentioned the cuts. Exactly how were you affected? We were affected to the point where our staff was cut in half, um, and those who remained could only work on a 75% salary. It, it was, as I say, a paralytic cut. We just didn't have the capacity to assist all the families that, that needed help. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the families volunteer, as I understand it. Now, how many families or parents are actually involved in them and are they single parent or most of them are single parents and we at, had about 200 yeah at the present time 91 percent of the of the families are single parent female headed households okay and how many actually benefit from the uh... All right since <clears throat> there's something that, that I should point out um, and I don't I would relate it in part to the fact that it's a minority area with language problems and probably some intercultural and intergenerational problems. So that I think we have a high, higher number of children categorized as, as handicapped than you would find perhaps in Westchester or Nassau County, where the statistics show 1.5, more than 1.5 handicapped children per family. Mm -hmm. So we have about 122 families and about 200 handicapped children. Okay, um, how do people find out about your group and, and help to contribute to it, to its progress, other than on shows like us? And do you have any literature that you put out? Well, Mercedes is an example, certainly. She has told other families that, that uh, have had problems that there is a place that they could seek help. It's the concept probably should be noted, too. It, in effect, it, it came from the RAND studies. RAND Corporation did some studies, and what they wanted to see developed was a one-stop shopping um, place for human services, a broker in human services. Mm -hmm. So that the parents, if, if 
a level of trust is developed and they experience success and satisfaction, they're telling other parents. And we really don't need uh, to do flyers and camp public awareness campaigns. The families themselves attest to it. Well, thanks so very much for being with us and telling us about this program. And I wish you the best, and I hope the budget situation does get rectified. I okay, Miguel? Thank you, Ana. Next, experimental television in Espanol. A&S Home Sale. Home Sale. Right now at A&S, get this Sanyo Stereo Rack System. Complete with Dolby Cassette Deck. Just $299 at A&S. 15 to 45% off Stearns and Foster bedding. Selected style. Your firmness. Your size. Stearns and Foster. 15 to 45% off. Right now at A&S. sheets. Pierre Cardin sheets for $399 at A&S. Pretty floral. Ruffled cases. Fabulous. Bye. Just $399. Hey, it's A&S Home Sale. Right now at A&S. Terrific. Top star Lindsay Wagner. Can the great American shoe store make it in her world? Kitty can. Kitty can. Kitty can. Lindsay Wagner usually pays much more for great looking summer shoes, but she doesn't have to, right, Lindsay? You see anybody complaining? <laughs> Kitty can. And we are. Entertainment Tonight puts your week on a roll with PC Cab stars Gary Busey and Mr. T and brand new dream girl Linda Leilani Brown. Then Sandy Duncan works out and Carl Reiner and Steve Martin team up. He didn't do anything. <laughs> Make a date with Octopussy and Roger Moore, plus Peter Ustinov, Lorenzo Lamas, and Dwayne Hickman. They're still saying hi, Dobie. <laughs> It'll make your week. Entertainment Tonight, starting Monday at 7.30 on Channel 7. The kids of today are the doctors, the engineers, the scientists, the teachers of tomorrow. Only with your help can they be assured of a first-rate college education. Because today, colleges are having a hard time coping with the high costs of learning. Invest in the future of America. Please give to the college of your choice. The tremendous growth in the minority population has caused major television stations to take a closer look at their audiences and the programs that they're offering. With us today to tell us a little bit about what ABC is doing by ABC Uno is Alan Cohen, the project director for that program. Hi, Alan, and welcome to Tiempo. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about how the experiment works. Uh, how does, what, what do you do? Uh... Very simple. All the home viewer has to do in order to enjoy the service is turn on ABC television, turn down the sound, and turn on the radio to WBNX in New York on June 1, which was last Wednesday, June 4, which was yesterday, June 8th and 15th for Fall Guy in primetime, and 11th and 18th uh, in Saturday morning programming for Children's Fair. How were those programs chosen, The Fall Guy and uh, The Puppy's New Adventure? The Fall Guy, which surprised me as a selection, was really based on research. We found that in four of the five markets that we are testing, that of ABC produced action, adventure, drama programs, Fall Guy is the number one program in Hispanic households in those markets. And the markets, by the way, are New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Miami, and San Antonio. Why has ABC decided to provide this service now? Is there a recognition of the need for uh, Spanish programming? Basically, we are all aware of the fact that there was a tremendous explosion in the Hispanic population. We're looking at a population now of 20 to 25 million families of, of, of uh, Spanish heritage in the United States. We're looking at the potential of 30 million by 1990. And in 18 years, which is the turn of the century, 40 million people. That's a very significant segment of the population. We're the fifth largest Spanish nation in the world right now. We have more Hispanics in our country right now than there are people 
in the nation of Canada. The question is how many of those people would prefer uh, listening to a program or watching a program and listening to it in Spanish instead of English? Because mm -hmm. many of those people are English speaking. Uh, although they are Hispanics, they, some of them, especially the youth, might prefer to see it in, in English. That's a very valid question. Again, I can only answer it from a research point of view because this is the purpose of the test, mm -hmm. to find out what kind of response we're going to get. But we believe, rather than being statistical, that there are significant numbers in terms of Hispanic people who prefer the Spanish language within the confines of their own home. Mm -hmm. Since ABC in the past has never addressed this issue, we have no data against which to measure. Therefore, we're doing this test to find out what kind of response we will get. How many Hispanics are involved in the program, in this project? The entire production unit mm -hmm. that, is, that is executing this program for us, which is a division of 20th Century Fox, all writers and members of the cast are Hispanic. And then how will you determine the success? by a five-market research evaluation, which hopefully will either give us a positive or negative story in terms of whether the programs were well-received or the commercial content was well-received. And at that time, you'll decide whether or not it will become a regular service. That's correct. The evaluation uh, will leave us with some very important decisions and to make. And maybe expand to other programs also. That possibility exists, yes. Mm -hmm. But what we're looking for is, is on a first-step basis, is the results of the experiment. Were there any difficulties in identifying the Spanish broadcast stations? I, we, we had no difficulty in identifying the broadcast stations in terms of, 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 of stations we wanted to reach in each market. Mm -hmm. uh, and we found a willingness on their part to participate in the experiment. Here in New York, WBNX has been delighted to participate in the experiment. I wonder how the Spanish television stations feel about the competition. I can't answer that. Uh, I don't think I really look at it at this point in terms of competition. I, I look at it in terms of opportunity for the audience to widen their viewing fare and make a selection. In terms of buyers for advertising, I think we're widening their horizons as well. well we wish you good luck. And um, hopefully it'll become a regular feature because Thank I'm you. sure that there are a lot of people who would prefer listening to it in Spanish. And uh, we hope you folks uh, tune in next week and come back and spend more time with us. Yes, and don't forget the Puerto Rican Day Parade on June 12th. That's right. Take part in the Museum Miles 5th Annual Street Festival this Tuesday evening. The special events will begin at 6 p.m. at El Museo del Barrio at 104th Street and 5th Avenue. Continue all of the 10 major cultural institutions between 86th and 106th Streets. That's Tuesday evening, June 7th, on Museum Miles.